I wanted to look at um, the worsening insecurity in Nigeria's northwest. Uh, well, as you know, uh, there is the situation in uh, Delta State. Um, that is a different, but the Senate had a closed-door meeting uh, yesterday with our uh, military chiefs to uh, address, confront and address this situation in particular. Let's take a look at that first. in the probe to unravel the truth behind the attack on troops of 181 amphibious battalion on a peace mission to a Koma community in Delta State. The lawmakers are disturbed by this development and determined to ensure the actual perpetrators of this gruesome murder are apprehended and prosecuted. After its first meeting with the country's security chiefs, the Senate assures that no stone will be left unturned as it will continue to assist the armed forces in unraveling the situation. The lawmakers have also called for the deployment of improved technology and artificial intelligence to assist with the ongoing investigation. We will continue to support our armed forces and I want to also assure Mr. President that he took the right step when he gave that direction and directive to our armed forces to fish out the perpetrators of this heinous and horrific crime by killing our officers and men in Kwama. And for us in the National Assembly, there is no investment that the administration can do better than investing in the armed forces and other security agencies for them. To secure us. We just have to continue to appeal for patience and understanding. We also decided that uh, technology has become very important yes. and that the armed forces must begin to uh, utilize technology and artificial intelligence to track down the location of some of these uh, gangsters. Yes. By and large, we encourage them that they are doing a human job yes. protecting the assets of the nation. Without doubt, Delta State is very important as far as the custodians of the assets of our nation is concerned. And whatever happens, we must be sure that only people who are guilty face the consequence. The Joint Committee assures that it will continue to interface with security chiefs and assist by any means possible to ensure the perpetrators do not go unpunished. T.J. Suadio, it's with news. Abuja. Okay, as I said, uh, that you know, story uh, relates to the ongoing situation, you know, the um, ambushing and uh, killing of uh, soldiers, 17 of them. Uh, so it's, it's part of the general security, insecurity hike in the country. Well, our guest this morning is an expert, uh, Professor T.A. Mohamed Baba, uh, National Publicity Secretary of Arewa Consultative Forum. Uh, and uh, a, a fine morning to you, a Prof. Very good morning to you. Yes. Happy Thank to be with you. Indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, the worrying violence, you know, and insecurity in the north, and then in particular in the northwest, um, is, is worsening. Uh, one, the first thing to ask is, um, do you agree with that assessment that it is really worsening and then of course we're going to follow up with uh, what exactly uh, would you prefer uh, we just heard there's um, senators there speaking about bringing technology to bear is is there a, a chance of that being of much use in the situation the worsening uh, security situation in the northwest well let me begin by saying there is no doubt that the security situation in the northwest has been getting worse there is no doubt about it you don't need any evidence beyond the number of people that are abducted the number of uh, hey, school children. too much noise in my ear too much noise in your ear no no, no i'm sorry <laughs> no not you sir please continue i was given a false i understand, I understand. Sorry about that. Yes. Uh, there is no doubt that it's been getting worse. Now, for me, what is most worrying, apart from the escalating situation, is the obvious evidence that it is getting organic. By that, I mean too many people are getting involved. It's not just the bandits. They have a series of uh, contacts in settlements among normal populations, and they seem to be feeding them. 
Now, that to me, it's uh, very worrying. Uh, secondly, I think the, the, obviously, I would say, our, all the effects of the measures that have been taken so far appear to be ineffective against the escalating uh, dimension of the problem. Now, you ask if technology will help. Yes, technology will surely help. I have in mind exactly the use of drones. But uh, this has to be followed also, I think, by uh, intelligence on ground. And new strategies are definitely called for. Uh, I would prefer a situation where the traditional entrenched traditional leadership among communities is involved. Look, this uh, leadership, the people know where these people are. Uh, the people can fish out collaborators, okay. what we call informants, uh, and so on. There are definitely, there is a need to declare an emergency on this situation and deal with it at that level. Um, uh, one one marked departure from what we've been hearing from the authorities uh, in the past is um, the release now by the federal government of the names of those they are calling collaborators and have been put on Nigeria's uh, watch list. Um, is, this, is this a significant step forward? Because it would appear that part of the problem uh, was that, well, we were saying that uh, we had this unknown soldier syndrome, uh, but now the authorities have actually pinpointed some people and, have, and they're, they're, they're confident enough to name them including bureau de change and, um, you know, individuals. Um, is this a positive, do, do you see this as having an effect on this whole matter? Oh, yes, there is no doubt about that, but I would have expected the government to go beyond that. I mean, this problem is a national security threat. If, in fact, we have credible information against these people or the operators of the bureau de change, they are operated by people, they should be arrested immediately and investigated and prosecuted. It's not enough to just name someone as a suspect. If there is a reasonable ground to suspect involvement, let's have the details. If I, when I saw the list, I was wondering if it is any different from the list of people indicted by Dubai authorities about, uh, I think, a year or two, uh, two years ago. And... Uh, it's not enough to say that uh, it's good, but it's not enough to say that these are suspects. They should be arrested. They should be investigated uh, with uh, speed and then uh, charged to court so that uh, we cut off that vital artery that supplies blood to the banditry uh, in terms of food, in terms of money for arms, and so on. We need to completely cut off that uh, artery, so that at least they are starved of this kind of support, because it's very vital to to their operations. So, well, if you ask me whether I think it will help, it will help, but I think it is a bit too little. The government should assure us that they are under arrest, and they are being investigated and will be prosecuted within the shortest time possible, especially as allowed in the Constitution. You know, this is what people, a lot of people, you didn't even need to be an expert to imagine that this would be the way that government would move. Uh, but in the past, um, it looks as if people have, uh, the government has been uh, concerned, if not preoccupied, with the issue of uh, democracy and being seen to the fair and uh, you know he who alleges must prove and all those kind of things might have been the reasons that were adduced for uh, you know they are making you know uh, haste uh, slowly uh, in these matters but uh, now that we're getting information that these utterances these revelations are made with the full knowledge of the president and um, you know we're, we, it looks like there's a different way going uh, we're, we're going to go a different way it, it, it hopefully should make a difference from those times when ordinary people were phoning in and saying, what is the problem? We, we, we rely on the Nigerian army. We know the Nigerian army has capability, but why are they not showing their, uh, their, their, their might? Uh, that was the kind of thing we used to have in the past, that they still need uh, an executive. Uh, it, maybe that's not the word. Uh, the way. They need a command uh, from the commander-in-chief to proceed. This has not seemed to be the case before, but do you get the sense that those kind of yearnings 
President Tinubu is now taking off the gloves, so to speak, in terms of this whole security situation. There is no doubt, and I make my comment in the, in the light of the fact that there are a lot of uh, issues in security that cannot be disclosed uh, openly uh, because they will jeopardize countermeasures being taken or being contemplated by government. But you see, to go back to your point, uh, if the government will go to the point of naming names, I think they would have collected enough evidence for action. So if you will name names, I don't see what you are worried. You see, the other problem that has uh, contributed to this escalation is dithering on part of government, political correctness on part of the authorities. Uh, the armed forces, the police, and the civil defense, in particular, uh, supported by DSS, should be empowered to act immediately. But I will also, uh, in one way or another, but directly involve traditional leadership in identifying locations where these people operate. We cannot surrender everything to them. We can, and the worrying thing is they seem to be attacking the most vulnerable populations, poor rural folks, children, especially in school. I mean, we don't need any evidence to... Uh, wait. What do we wait for? We have evidence. We know where we can locate them. Drones can be used. And so, so what are we waiting for? This dithering, this waiting, I think is also feeding into the escalation of the problem. And you, you, you spoke there about this dithering, part of it might be this whole issue of uh, political correctness, uh, maybe the uh, uh, also considering international opinion, since the world has become a global village and anything that is done before you know where you are, uh, you start getting criticism. Uh, so this whole political correctness uh, uh, issue that you touched upon, um, how can they go about it? Because, um, look, when other countries need to do things, it seems to us that they do get on with it. Uh, but we, uh, would you say we are preoccupied with this question of political correctness? Because as I said, a lot of people actually put a lot of uh, confidence on the Nigerian military to do the needful uh, if they are so allowed. There is no question about the capability of the Nigerian security forces. Right from the 1960s when they operated outside on peacekeeping missions, we know what, we know what result. They have come with accolades. They have performed excellently in most of the hot places in the world. Uh, Haiti, Congo, uh, Lebanon, and other places. Now, to go back to political correctness, you see, you know, you become confused. Is it politically correct, the image we are getting of school children being abducted uh, within a week? That also is political incorrectness. So if we are hesitant to take action because we want to be correct, then, of course, inaction itself is controverting political correctness. So you need a fine balance, but government needs to be firm. Government needs to show it is in control. The armed forces, the security forces in general, should be empowered to deal decisively with these miscreants. Now, if you want to be correct, of course, uh, the activities of the terrorists and bandits is making nonsense of your political correctness. How politically correct when you carry over 200 uh, school children attending basic education, so we think most of them are under 16, some, you know, seven, eight. That is also politically incorrect. There is a need to provide leadership. There is a need to proceed. You know, to stamp the foot of authority on all those spaces where these bandits and terrorists operate. Because I think, like I said, the other, the corollary is that you are appearing to be weak and ineffective or unconcerned. I see more negative uh, repercussions of children being carted like sheep, being carted like cattle into the bush and staying for months and months and months uh, rather than decisive action to deal with the problem.
So, yeah, you know, there is political correctness, but political correctness is a two-edged sword. You do it, uh, you look like good, but you don't do it, you look ineffective and weak or unconcerned. So I would rather take uh, the first uh, option. Deal with it and deal with uh, correctness later. Mm, okay. Uh, let me go back to the point you made about um, the need to also bring traditional rulers uh, uh, to uh, on board uh, in, in this whole issue. Well, uh, and that's because I imagine uh, pe these people are not spirits, as you remember, during the Nigerian Civil War. Uh, no, it wasn't during the Nigerian Civil War. It was when banditry was rife all over the country and there was this whole question about this jingle about armed robber and obi spirit. I mean, these people are known in their communities. Um, uh, but is, uh, do the, is it that the traditional rulers feel vulnerable because it is thought that they will know some of these people? They, they are Nigerians. They, believe they belong to certain communities. And um, maybe they feel that, look, it's one thing to help the authorities by calling them and, you know, calling them up and letting them know. Uh, but how about their security? Because it's gotten so bad uh, that even traditional rulers are not safe from the same violence that is, you know, meted out to ordinary people. They are kidnapped. Some, some, some of them are actually kidnapped. Perhaps all of them don't have the kind of security that yeah. others have. That's true. You see, we are talking about knowledge and information. Uh, in any of such counter measures, you need actionable knowledge and actionable intelligence. But these need to be processed. Now, it is in the process, in the processing, that we have leakages. And then, uh, of course, like I said, it is becoming organic that they have, uh, they are establishing footholds in communities. Here in Sokoto, uh, I was listening to a, to a, I was looking at a video clip where the bandits is saying we are involved in this and uh, we have informants who buy motorcycles when we steal them, they buy cattle when we steal them. And so on, and I was amazed at how casually they're saying so. I mean, someone has to know this. We have to change the way we, pro we gather and process intelligence. Like you said, uh, in Zamfara State, a traditional ruler, I think about two or three years ago, came out in a meeting of traditional rulers to say, look, all of us here know where these bandits are. We are in control of our areas. We know where everything is happening. We know who is where. When people come into the community, there's a whole chain of command. The information is passed. Uh, he said so. And then that very evening, he was killed when he went back to his village. That points to the organic nature of the problem, as I have always said. We need to uproot it from the communities. We need to assure people that if they give intelligence, they will be protected. Uh, I know of a village where they process the intelligence involving the DSS, the police, and so on. And it's a remarkable success. So that uh, they handle the information in such a way that if it leaks, it could be pointed out at what point who did what they should not do and who did not do what they should do. And it's effective. Look. Uh, the traditional institution I have in mind has been on ground for centuries. In fact, colonialism made them. Colonialism made very, very effective use of the traditional institution for control. There is no reason why we should abandon it. I mean, the lacuna, I think, is in the modern constitution, okay. whereby uh, the whole thing is based on the, the conventional security forces in our case, controlled by the federal government, but with uh, deployment in states, we need to look at that again. We need to look at the process. We need to empower uh, those who can gather intelligence for us. It could be someone in the motor park. Yeah. It could be someone, a, 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 a mechanic. And so they could pass actionable information, but they need to be protected. Yes. And uh, it, it, yeah, it has to be in such a way that you can trace with reasonable accuracy at what point is the information leaking. Uh, I think about five years ago, we were doing the research in Kano, and someone told me, look, we know when these things happen. We know when a stranger comes into our community. We monitor their activities, but we are afraid of 
telling the police. We are afraid of reporting before because you know it. Someone would come and say, you are the one who gave information that last night I did not come home until 3 o'clock. Be very careful. You see, this is what we need to deal with. Okay. You know, there is a lot of information. It's just the traditional rulers. Ordinary folks Indeed. can tell you that something, that something is amiss. Something is not normal. And uh, you go ahead and gather further information and deal with the problem. All right, Prof. Um, I I'm going to take a very quick break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Chat with uh, Professor T. A. Mohammed Baba, and um, it's about the national. Uh, public, he's the National Publicity Secretary of Arewa Consultative Forum and um, looking at ways and means to sort of bring down the level of security because as he agreed at the very beginning, it definitely is worsening in the North uh, West. And a part of the challenge here is that these people are not spirits, as we say locally, meaning that um, they're not invisible entities. They are known. They are in the, in the community. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's this whole problem about fear. Uh, the professor talked at the beginning about um, the, the, the whole uh, question of it being, it, it has developed into an organic uh, kind of a system uh, where, in fact, other people have said that, quite frankly, it's become a business. It's not just bad guys alone anymore. Now, even ordinary people who maybe are not so very high, high up morally are saying that, look, if things are tight, this is an option. It seems to be a piece of cake. And that is what we're talking about. It shouldn't be a piece of cake anymore. And um, the professor was saying that these are things that um, the Nigerian uh, security forces, which he has attested to uh, their competency, uh, should be able to deal with. Now we have the presidential order, at least in terms of uh, 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 people of interest that are now being put on a watch list. And um, we, we just need, let, let me go back to the, the other point you, you, you made about um, um, uh, drones, because that links to intelligence. Uh, again, our intelligence has been said to be quite good. Uh, but, Professor, you did say that it also has to be, care has to be taken that it's accurate as well and fit for our purpose. Um, let, let's speak a bit more about that. We are constantly being told that intelligence is expensive. These drones and things that you're talking about, these are also highly expensive uh, uh, equipment. How, how good are we in that area? Because there have been one or two unfortunate incidents where uh, faulty intelligence has led to uh, friendly fire. Yeah. With tragic consequences. You see... That, uh, that's that's that, that's a, um, a a network issue. Uh, the networks have been apologizing to us. Um, the professor is joining us via Zoom, and it's going to sort of um, free up uh, very very shortly. Um, in the meantime, uh, Mr. Yakub has come on the line. Um, good morning, Mr. Yakub. Thank you for calling in. Thanks, Good morning, sir. Good morning. And uh, I, I don't know where the prof is staying. I will paraphrase your comments or question in case yeah, he, he, has, he isn't much, able to hear it. Uh, first and foremost, I, I think uh, who does go to this uh, present government? Who does go to them once again? Because uh, if you could remember, during the time of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, the government has at that time, they, they keep mentioned that they know these people, they know who they are. They know this, they know that, and then they are going to mention their name and all those things. And then for the past eight years of that government, nobody knows their name. Their name was not published. In fact, I could remember the information ministers at that time, in terms of uh, Eli Mohammed. He said that several times. Up to that point, to the end of that era. Nobody knows who these are. But for this present government to summon courage to let the Indian citizens know who are those people, who behind these guys, is kudos to them. But it is half done, sir. 
I have my reservation for saying that. Why am I saying that is this? Yes, the name was published, but if you are we are seeing the name. Where is their pictures? It is the name cannot operate in itself. The picture must be able to, to circulate in the media. So that Nigerian citizen will know these people. This is the people behind with the change of this or so, so name. This is people behind this. this, this. So Nigerian government should be able to put their picture on the media. Let's know who people are. Okay. Now, Professor said something that so damaged to my mind. And then I give kudos to Professor. Because you know why? These people must be able to charge to court. And then it must be spilled. And then in fact, it must be a special court for this kind of a thing. Do you know how much we are budgeting every year? The, the security takes the chunk of money in our budget every year. So why is it? So Nigerian government, this is half done. Nigerian citizens are requested for this. We need to know their name by their pictures. Okay. They must be charged to court and then the court must be special court. Thank and God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yakub calling in from Doc Wemo. Uh, you, you heard most of that, Prof, but you also said earlier that, um, well, it's not everything about security that you can speak about in the open. Um, the point that he was bringing up, it, 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 is that relevant? Does it, does it affect this? That Why aren't we furnished with pictures of these people that are not, any, there's, there's no way you can see them as uh, friends of Nigeria? Well, there is no doubt. It's what I've said earlier. In fact, like I said, I was surprised at naming names. What I would have preferred to see is these are the names and they are under arrest. Within a week, they will be charged to court. This is who they are. Those broody chain have been, uh, have been uh, uh, closed, uh, taken over by security forces. Their computers, their equipment have been seized so that the security forces will harvest intelligence as to where the money is coming from where it is going for god's sake we have the financial intelligence unit we have the banks we have all the facilities we can trace every cover that is coming in and out of the system and what the gentleman said is true let's go beyond naming i mean for god's sake you have someone stealing something from your your pocket you are seeing him with the evidence and you are saying, I know you, you have you are holding my telephone, you have my money, and then there is no further action. It doesn't make much sense. Yes, we applaud the government for taking the bull by the horns, but please go beyond that. I mean, more important uh, than naming names to me is the action you are taking to counter their activities. The speaker from the demo is uh, right on point. And this is part of what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, let's go beyond the names. Look, we have all the national security apparatus. We have all the laws against people doing that. I mean, so what are we waiting for? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We have the, our armed forces, members of our armed forces, the officer corps, have been trained in nearly all the key military institutions in the world. Uh, they go there, and we have first-class uh, facilities that are also being utilized by foreign security personnel. What are we doing with bandits? Okay. Of course, you know, it's a ragtag army. And of course, we suspect they are also being sponsored by countries that do not wish us well, okay. that they would prefer to see us disintegrated so that they can more easily come and cut our resources. Government has to decide on whose side are we. There is a limit to which you can collaborate or you can be friendly, or you can tolerate people that you see are acting against the interests of your people. Okay. Um, Mazi Okorafo, thank you for holding on. Uh, Mazi is calling in from Aruchuku. Good morning. Good morning, Sayori. <laughs> Sayori, say, is this issue of security or no security or insecurity? Do you know that we have adopted to say it, I've been saying it, let's go to the process. Uh, you it are a bit low, Mazi. I don't know if that's from us or from you. Mazi, please continue. Can you speak up a bit? That's what I'm saying. It's what I've got beyond the issue of uh, computer. Now, when we talk about insecurity or security, what do we see? Sayori, I think I'm not going to see all these things that we're talking about not in any part of Nigeria. When they kill somebody, what do you see? You normally see the IC. You normally see the private parts. Who are who are the people responsible? 
So this is not a question of insecurity, insecurity, insecurity. There must be a reason behind all these things. In as far as I when they collect all this money, where are they collecting the money for? Is it not from the banks? How do they collect all such amounts of money? It is beyond. We have to go back to the base and find out why are they removing people's eyes, private parts, and the rest when they kill somebody. And this is coming up every day. And we, every day we see that. Well, what, what do we do? I how we are going to move. People are talking about going to farm. They have started. We are supposed to have water. What do you call this is not farming, that rainy season, dry season farming. But people can't go to farm. Is that what do we do now, right? What are the politicians doing? We have to investigate whether these things are being used for rituals or not. Now, when this issue of issue coming to fight insecurity, people were going to hire human beings and come. Now, they have not talked to what? Terrorists. Is it not politicians that we're doing this now? Agreed or not agreed? But the question is this. How do we stop these things? When you say you are going to investigate, every day investigation, investigation, and by the time I say that, all those raw materials, from that very place. Who are the people harassing all these things? Is it not, is it not those bandits? Why are they doing that? They are doing that to scare away people that so they, they will be exactly what they Where are they carrying those things to? Is it not to outside? Okay. Uh, th thank you, Amazi. Um, we lost sound towards the end, but I think you have said uh, everything that you wanted to say, uh, really. Uh, Prof, did you, did, did you hear that uh, clearly? Yes, I, I think I got the major part of what you said, you know, this question of uh, healings for organ harvesting. Yes. Well, what, isn't that another yes. form of terror? It is. It is terror. It is terror. Uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, I, I saw a video clip where, you know, it's alleged that they are kidnapping people inside Kaduna town so that they will have their kidneys. And this is done by doctors and so on and so on. This is one dimension. You see, the whole thing is multidimensional. That's why I keep happening on the organic transformation of this problem. Obviously, the security forces alone cannot deal with that. That's why I keep going, but we need to go back into the communities. We need to empower communities to begin to defend themselves by being on the lookout. This idea of if you see something, say something. Somebody must be seeing what is happening. And we need to empower communities so that they know who is coming into their communities. We need to have a rapid uh, response. We need to have early warning system. And we can train communities. So we need the so-called kinetic and the non-kinetic approach. The non-kinetic intelligence gathering, processing, is very, very key. You see, one of the best weapons, one of the most effective weapons used by bandits and terrorists and criminals is not the weapons they carry. It is the surprise they spring on people. When they come to you and you are unexpecting them, you are asleep, you are eating, you are confused, but they are prepared. And so they do what they want. So we need a situation we need an arrangement so that as soon as they come into communities someone sounds the alarm within the community such as as little as blowing whistles all over Whatever. so that as soon as someone sees them within two minutes the whole settlement is uh, suffused with uh, whistles blowing one of the other thing the criminal doesn't like is being noticed that you know they are around, they escape. So we need to empower communities. Okay, yeah, there is the ritual thing, there is the, but it's also within communities. Uh, when you see someone that is suddenly rich, you know, you begin to ask questions. Yeah. When someone comes to, to borrow large amount of money that they promise to return to you within, uh, beyond their capacity, and within two or three days, you need to know that they are under a spell of someone that you need to help them uh, get out of that spell. You need to know if there is something happening. As uh, Communities need to have community guards that may not be able to confront the bandits because it's dangerous, but they will alert everybody. Someone must be ready to alert the security forces uh, to come to the rescue of people. And we have the technology 
to do that these days. Indeed. Why are we not using it? Okay. So a sort of reorientation of our societies, especially in those areas, uh, to, to begin to look at things differently. Let me bring on this other caller. Uh, good morning, Mr. George in Ikeja. Good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning to the prof. Yeah. Uncle Yari, permit me to continue from where Yakub stopped. Please. I want to commend the government for the courage of publishing the names of these uh, sponsors. But what I expected was that they would tell us that these people are already in their net and that they are facing persecution. Because just publishing the names, supposing these people hear these names and then run away, how would they call them to question? I also want the government to look at a cleric, a cleric who is boasting everywhere. It was when this list was published, he said it is rubbish. She told me that he knows the, the bandits. He has been uh, parading himself as a go-through. But the government is not doing anything to him. I believe that this man has a question to answer or questions to answer as to his relationship with uh, 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 bandits and uh, armed robbers. Then, Uncle Yori, I expect the uh, National Assembly, the Senate in particular, to do better than what they are doing. Calling the service chiefs every week to question them. When, when, when I mean... What time would the service chiefs have to go and pursue these uh, criminals in the bush? They, they, they summoned them last week. Yesterday again, they summoned them. They should give them some space to do the work now. I expect <laughs> the, the National Assembly to be amending these uh, criminal laws. For example, you, you kill somebody, somebody dies in your hand when you kidnap the person, the penalty should be dead. And they are not doing those ones. I just you know, in a panicky measure, calling service chiefs every day. The service chiefs are human beings. Do they have to do their work? If you are calling them every day, when would they go to the bush to go and pursue the criminals? That's just what I, 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 I thought I should say. Okay. But the government sh has done well. They should allow the, I mean, they pursue need... these criminals. Okay. Don't, be defen okay. don't be defensive. Yeah. Take the battle to them. Go the whole hog. Uh, and as uh, Professor was saying just be, uh, before that call came in, the society, you can't leave it to the, uh, uh, the security uh, 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 professionals alone. The entire society uh, has to become involved, uh, and that will require training, uh, because these people, it has been established, are well known. Now, the point he made about um, a, a cleric, you know, and the... Uh, well, there was th those who would say that the reckless abandon with which some clerics are able to speak and still be walking free, um, I, I don't know if they're not part of the, if they're part of the solution or part of the problem, because they are quite influential. And um, unfortunately, they say things that might affect, you know, the community and actually be counterproductive. Um, I I is that a significant factor too, uh, the way those in authority, in this case, religious or spiritual authority uh, conduct themselves? There is no doubt about that. We need to uh, look at that aspect too. Uh, you see, again, I expect government to take these people up. Even if not openly, you know, you can invite them, you can go to them and ask where they're making, what was the basis? Yeah, the cleric made point, he said, yeah, in fact, well, when he, they went to the bush, they went with security personnel, I expected someone to tell me that the security personnel were also gathering information. If not, then there is a lacuna there too. I mean, why do you just go there? Uh, and why do you allow people to talk the way they want to? What information have you invested from talking to them? If you like, confidentially, if you don't want to uh, talk to them openly, challenge them because you are afraid of repercussions, I keep saying that the other part of the problem is also important and it's more critical. That people are suffering. Yes. The problem is not going away. There is a limit. And then you make appointments in the armed forces without uh, giving people timelines. Look, I want this thing solved by this and this time. Or so I will take further action. People are just appointed and left alone. No timelines. 
no demand for deliverables by government. I mean, if anybody is making utterances, I expect the security forces to talk to them. We have a lot of intelligence outfits. The police has its own, the DSS, uh, Defense Intelligence Agency, any number of people that anybody who appears to have information has a duty, constitutional duty, to reveal this information that will help the security forces or they are complicit. Complic com uh, complicity in this criminality is also itself a criminality. Mm -hmm. And government has a deep investigate and take action. We cannot just allow this thing to keep festering and everyone is saying what they like and so on. If people have information, it should be, uh, this, they should avail this with the security forces. If they don't, the security forces should get them to reveal the information or take necessary action. Uh, uh, quickly, Prof, um, the question uh, upon the um, the happening in uh, uh, Delta State, uh, people started to talk about um, the roles of the police vis-a-vis -vis that of the army. Um, is yes. this situation that we're talking about, the worsening insecurity in Nigeria's northwest, is it, people are saying that it's not really the army, it's the police, but in either case, whether the army or the police, do we have enough uh, boots on the ground? Do we have enough men to do an effective job, do you think, uh, including all the scientific and um, intelligence uh, you know, aspects that you have enumerated? Do you think we have enough? Oh, no, no, this is a rhetorical question. We don't have enough. Even government has said we don't have enough uh, members of the armed forces. We don't have enough police. In fact, the mere involvement of the armed forces in internal security is itself an aberration. That shows weaknesses in our security system. That uh, with civil security should be able to deal with that. The army, uh, the armed forces are for uh, defense of the territorial integrity of the land. But obviously, the escalating dimension of this insecurity is itself uh, challenging the uh, integrity of the Federation as a whole. Yes. Uh, do we have enough boots, equipment, and so on on, on ground? The, the big answer is no. Otherwise, we will not be talking about it. Yes. We need more police. I mean, if you go to the, the United Nations recommended number of police, per unit of the population, we are far, 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 far away. This is a country with a population of about 220 million, 240 million, and we have less than 1 million police personnel. Come on. You don't need anybody to tell you that. If you look at the United States, and we like, uh, we like comparing ourselves, we like making allusions to the United States, although our situation is different. You see... The largest employer of labor in the United States is not industries, is not government, is national security agencies. At all levels, national, state, local, city, if you put them together, the national security agency employs the highest number of people, despite their sophistication, despite the equipment, despite everything. You see, the human angle, we go back to it, the human angle is very important. A system is only as effective as the people operating it uh, want it to be. And in this case, we don't even have enough. All right. And then. we always do with more. Well, thank you very much, Professor T.A. Mohamed Baba. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, it's been quite an interesting conversation. Thank you very much uh, for coming on the program. Uh, Professor T. A. Mohamed Baba is the National Publicity Secretary of Arewa Consultative Forum. And that's our program today. Do please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folari. Bye-bye for now.